G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to have a look at the elimination method for solving simultaneous equations. So sit back and enjoy. I'm going to start out by putting some simultaneous equations up, okay? So we'll start out with 2x uh, plus 4y, and this is going to equal 10. That's our first equation. Then we're going to have another equation where x plus 9y is equal to 12. So as you'll notice, a couple of things with simultaneous equations. I'll get through the basics first. So first off, we have two sets of linear equations. Uh, these equations are made up of parts with letters in them, okay? The letters are called variables, so we have the variable of x in both equations, and we have the variables of y in both equations. In front of the variables, we have these numbers, which are called coefficients. So the coefficient here is we have a coefficient of 2 in front of the variable x. We have a coefficient of 4 in front of the variable of y. In front of this one here, where it's not written, we assume that the actual coefficient here is 1, and it is going to be 1. We just don't write it in. So that's probably what you want to get uh, used to first off. The basics are covered on this. So the way that you solve this particular set of equations, first off, I would go through and give these equations each a name. This one here is going to be equation 1, and this is equation 2. This helps a bit later on when you're trying to identify what's happening to each equation as we go along. So the trick to doing these equations by the elimination method is you have to adjust the entire equations that we have here so that what we have is the coefficients in front of one of the variables here will match. So say either we end up with a 2x here or we end up with matching coefficients in front of the y variables here. Sound complicated? It's not too bad. So I'm going to start off by having a look at the variables x here. And you're going to notice that we have 2x and we have 1x here. So we can stuff around with this entire equation. We can multiply this entire equation 2 here by 2. And by doing that, we're going to end up with a 2x and then we'll have this matching uh, coefficient in front of each of the variable x here. So let's do that. I'm going to first off, I'm going to rewrite equation 1 here. You'll see why in a second. So 2x plus 4y is equal to 10. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply equation 2 by 2. So 2 times x is equal to 2x. This is going to be added to 9 times 2, which is 18. That's in front of the variable y. And then we have 12 times 2, which is 24. Cool. Just double that entire equation. We can do that. So the next thing we do is we are going to pretty much eliminate one of the equations here. We have these matching coefficients and variables. We're now going to take one equation off the other. And I'll show you how we do that. I look usually at what we have here as we look at this second variable of y. Uh, the bigger one, I'm going to take away the smaller one here. So I'm going to multiply this entire equation, I guess you could think of, by negative 1. When I do that, I'm going to end up with negative 2x. This is going to become negative 4y, and this is going to equal negative 10. Okay? Now let's take one equation off the other by eliminating it. So what happens when we do this? Well, this is what we get. 2x minus 2x, well, this is just going to give us nothing. So I'm not going to write anything down here. 18y minus 4y, we're going to end up with 14y. And this is going to equal 24 minus 10. 24 minus 10 is equal to 14. So if 14y is equal to 14, that means, therefore, y is equal to 1, because 14 divided by 14 is equal to 1. So straight away, we have our first uh, solving of one of our variables here, y is equal to 1. So I'm going to rub out uh, all this here, and we're just going to remember that y is equal to 1. Obviously, uh, if you're in school, you want to keep that all there so your teacher can see you're working out. But I have this... Uh, Little problem for space here. So we're going to say that y is equal to 1. We worked that one out just then. Now what we do is we substitute this value y equals 1 into one of these equations here to solve it. I think the easiest equation is equation 2 here. Okay, So let's put this into equation 2. We have that x, we don't know what that is. It's what we're trying to work out. And what we have is y is equal to 1. So 9 times y is equal to 9. And this is equal to 12. Pretty simple to solve now. We could take 9 off both sides and we end up with x is equal to 3 because 3 plus 9 is equal to 12. So we have our two values here. We have x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1. 
The next thing I do, just as a little bit of a last thing here, it's good policy to now substitute in your X and Y value into the first equation or the other equation, just to see if you got it correct. And so let's do that. So two times X is equal to six. Uh, okay, four times Y, Y is equal to one. So that is equal to four. Six plus four is equal to 10. We've got the correct answer there. Everything's cool. And that's how you go solving these particular set of equations using the elimination method. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a bit of a harder one up now. So for our second example, let's try this particular set of equations here. This one's going to be a little bit harder. So 3x uh, minus 2y is equal to 31. And the next one we have is 2x, and that's going to be having 3y added to it, and that's going to be equal to negative 1. So straight away you can see a couple of complications possibly here. The first thing you might notice is we don't have a single thing that we could multiply either equation by to get the variable so they match. So we're going to deal with that in a second. The next thing, negatives. Watch out for these guys when you're doing these particular types of equations. They are a really, really easy way of making mistakes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label each of these equations. We have equation 1 and we have equation 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look what we can multiply an equation by to get the matching coefficients in front of the variable here. So say for x, what can we multiply 2x by here to get 3x? And you're going, I can't think of anything. Well, it's going to be one and a half. It's going to get messy. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply each of the equations by a different number so we can get matching coefficients for the variables here. So as you have a look here, three and two, a number that both of these guys go into is six. To get to six, we would actually multiply three by two, and to get to six, we would multiply two by three. So that's what we're going to do to each of these equations here. So equation one, let's multiply it by two. Three x times two is equal to six x. Negative two y times two is negative four y. This is equal to 31 times two, which is 62. Watch out for those negatives and positives, right? Uh, let's put the two down there, the second equation. So 2x times three is equal to 6x, matching just like we'd hoped. Uh, positive 3y times three is positive 9y. And this is equal to negative one times three. This is going to be negative three. All right, so we have these matching coefficients and variables here for x. So let's now finish off this particular uh, equation here. Now the next step we do is we're going to end up taking one equation off the other, the elimination part. So when we do that, I'm going to look here about which is my bigger one. This is the bigger one. So I'm going to multiply this equation here by negative one. So multiplied by negative one. It's going to change all the signs. Be pretty methodical when you do this and watch out. It's very easy to make mistakes. So this becomes negative 6x. This, a negative times a negative, we're going to have positive 4y. And 62 times negative 1 is negative 62. All right, now let's solve this. 6x minus 6x, that's where we're going to eliminate here. So these guys are going to get rid of each other. 9y plus 4y is equal to 13y. Okay? Negative 3 minus 62 is equal to negative 65. All right, so what do we got here? 13y is equal to negative 65. Okay, let's solve this. So we'll go negative 65 divided by 13. We're going to get our answer of y equals negative 5. Okay, so we know that y equals negative 5. Now let's go in and substitute this into one of our equations and see what we get. So let's do that right now. We know that y equals negative 5. So I'll get rid of these other guys as well. All right, let's substitute in. So let's substitute into any one of them. I don't really mind, hope you don't. So let's substitute into the first one here. It's as good as any into equation one. We have three X and let's substitute negative five into this. So negative five times negative two is plus 10. Watch out for your negatives. And this is equal to 31. All right, so what do we get now? 3x is going to equal, let's take 10 off this side and then 10 off this side, it's equal to 21, and therefore x is equal to 21 divided by 3, which is equal to 7. We've got both our answers. We've got 
y equals negative 5, and we have x is equal to 7. Let's just check this out in, in equation 2 here. So x is equal to 7, 2 times 7 is equal to 14, uh, 3 times negative 5 is minus 15, 14 minus 15 is equal to negative 1. We have the correct answer. A really, really good thing to keep checking. Okay, what about one last one of these that you can do? Okay, what about we do this one here? This is going to be 6x minus 3y, and that is going to equal 3. And we're going to have 4x, and this is plus 5y, and that is going to equal 16. All right, let's go through and solve it. So the very first thing we do, you know we're just going to give each one of these a label. We have equation 1 and equation 2. You're going to see that we don't actually have anything that lines up nicely here. So let's look for one that we can do it with. Let's uh, let's get uh, let's look some variables that we can match up. We have 6x and we have 4x here. So a number that both of these go into that's the simplest one I can think of is 12. We would multiply this by 2 and we would multiply this by 3 if we're looking at the uh, coefficients in front of x here. So let's go to equation 1 and we have equation 2 here. Let's now solve it. We end up with 12x. That's what we should get. 2 times 6x is 12x. Uh, negative 3y times 2 is negative 6y. And that is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. That's equation 1. Equation 2. Uh, 3 times 4x is 12x. Uh, that is going to be 5y times 3. So that's positive 15y. And that is equal to 16 times 3, which is equal to 48. All right. Cool, right? Now what are we going to do? Well, we've got that matching part here of the 12x's. They're going to end up eliminating each other out sort of thing. So I'm now going to take the smaller one of these off. So let's do that. This is going to be the one I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So this is going to become negative. That's going to become positive, And this here is going to become negative. Okay, I reckon it's a really good policy that you do this. I know it seems like it's not a major step, but it's a very important one. So 12x, take away 12x, they cancel each other out. 15y plus 15y is 21y. And this is equal to 48 subtract 6, which is equal to 42. You can see a really, really simple answer here. We have that y is equal to 42 divided by 21, which is equal to to 2. So that's the first part of our answer there. We have y is equal to 2. And I'll move that up there. And then we will substitute our values in and finish off this particular set of equations here. Okay, so let's do that. Now, let's go through equation 1, I guess. Equation 1 here. Um, and let's substitute in our value for y here. So what do we have? We have 6x. That's going to stay the same. Negative 3y times 2 is going to be negative 3 times 2 is going to be minus 6, and that is equal to 3. All right, so what happens when we get this? Let's just solve it. 6x, and we're going to add 6 to both sides. This is equal to 9. Therefore, x is going to equal 9 divided by 6, which is going to be 1 and a half. Okay, a bit tricky there, right? Not a whole number. So now let's just substitute into the second equation and check our answers are correct. Uh, we have x is equal to one and a half. So four times one and a half. Well, double of one and a half is three and double again is equal to six. And five times y, five times two is equal to 10. Six plus 10 is equal to 16. Therefore, our answer is correct. Anyway, hopefully you like that video on the elimination method of simultaneous equations. If you did, let me know in the comments and give me a thumbs up. It'd be much appreciated. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay well. See you later.